You're a priest at a little church out in the Mojave. It's your job to dig the graves. So you start digging one, and you hit bones, big bones, big human bones. You just found a giant. Since the beginning of time, humans have loved stories about giants. David and Goliath, Jack and the Beanstalk. So why should out in the Mojave be any different? And what could be behind some of these stories of giants? In the early 1930s, a man flying over the desert near Blythe, California, looked down and saw etched on the desert floor below the outlines of a giant man and several animals. The discovery set off a debate that rages to this day. Were the Blythe and Taglios, as the etchings were dubbed, the depiction by early Native Americans of a deity, part of a desert religious pilgrimage site, or, as some on the more fringes of things claim, an actual depiction of desert giants? That man has always carved huge figures from myth and legend on the ground is no abstraction. The White Horse, Long Man, and the Rude Giant from England being a few examples that we know of outside of the U.S. And that Native Americans in the deserts of the Southwest had tales and legends of giants in their myths is also well documented. In Death Valley, tales of huge men abound. From up in Nevada, the Paiute tribe are said to tell the tale of the Siti Ka, a tribe of red giants who ate men and children. The legends say that the tribe finally cornered them in a cave near Lovelock, Nevada, and piling brush up at the entrance, started a huge fire that killed and suffocated the giants. Numerous artifacts have been recovered from the grave, but somehow the giant bodies allegedly discovered always seem to go missing or have been destroyed. Modern rumors that huge mummified bodies, some with red hair, and of immense stature have been located deeper under the cave still pop up in modern desert folklore, along with the usual addition that they had been sent to the Smithsonian there, held in secret. And in other episodes, I have covered the legends of cities populated by giants being found under Death Valley, which show the tales grow wider and weirder with time. But it might surprise you to learn that in more recent times, many people believe that the bones of giants could still be found out in the remote and not so remote desert. In 1907, this article titled, Fine Jawbone of Giant Indians, ran in the Marposa Gazette. It claimed a group of men uncovered a jawbone twice the size of a modern man's, complete with teeth and to quote the article, obviously from a giant Indian. A further search of the ground turned up no other remains, and what happened to the jaw is unknown. Going back to 1871, this article reported that a priest digging a grave near Bakersfield uncovered a giant human skeleton four feet under the ground. The skull was so big, a man could wear the top of it like a hat, and the burial also contained several flint arrow and spearheads. Once out of the ground, the full skeleton measured seven feet, four inches from heel to crown, but upon exposure to the air, soon crumbled away into dust. However, the priest said he still had the flint artifacts, but I could find no more articles about it. Moving up to 1912, this article claimed the finding of another giant skeleton again measuring seven feet four inches tall and surrounded by numerous Native American artifacts. But it also made the claims that the bones belonged to an ancient race of giant Indians who were known to have inhabited the central and coastal area of Southern California up till about 300 years ago. Which might just come as a bit of a surprise to modern anthropologists to say the least. Now most people seem to agree that the average height of a Native American in historical times was between 5'5 five five and 5'8. So anyone who was six feet and over, seven feet tall, would automatically be considered a giant, a legitimate giant. But what happens when skeletons are found 
eight feet, nine feet, 10 feet, and even weirder. In 1911, the Los Angeles Herald asked, is this the skull of a giant? Before informing readers it was indeed a fake and used as part of an anatomy exhibit. But many people who just glanced at the picture thought otherwise. Because claims of giants goes way back in this country. In 1869, workers in Cardiff, New York, claimed they dug up the remains of a huge man, now almost petrified and turned to stone under an old barn. Dubbed the Cardiff Giant, the body was said to be over 10 feet tall and complete right down to the naughty bits. And of course, people came from all over to see it. The owner planned to even sell it to P.T. Barnum, who in his known fashion also made his own fake of the giant, but when the secret got out, interest in the giant or giants plummeted. And out west, people still claim to be finding giant bones in the desert. The papers of San Francisco trumpeted the finding of a giant human skeleton eight feet tall in 1903. Its finder, a Captain Critterdom, claimed that it was a prehistoric man. The article claimed another skeleton of similar height had been found not too far away several years earlier. But again, no proof survives. But my all-time favorite giant bone story is definitely this gem from the Los Angeles Herald titled, The Devil is Dead and Here's His Skeleton. A huge, hideous bipedal skeleton was being exhibited out west and eventually in New York while being touted as the remains of Satan himself. At first, mystery surrounded the location of the discovery, with many stating it had come from way out in the hot desert, a burning hell that would naturally provide the devil a home. But then the story came out that the thing had actually been exhumed from beneath an ancient temple in Japan of all places, and then smuggled to America via the West Coast and eventually to New York, where it was examined by experts in such matters and of course proclaimed legit. Then, to no one's apparent surprise, it disappeared into the bowels of some grasping museum and its secret scientists never to be seen again. Now the one underlying theme with all these stories is that the specimens always seem to go missing. Some scientists claim them. They're shipped to a lab somewhere out east and we never hear about it again. Kind of like with recovered UFOs, captured aliens, and anything else paranormal in nature. Leaving us with only stories, snippets, little glimpses of cool things that we would love to know more about. And I guess in the end, also with mysteries. I'm M.L. Behrman. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, ML Behrman here. I'd like to personally invite you to join the channel by subscribing. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help. Thanks.